that they need to step into those spaces because we have seen the abuse that women may go through when they need it. Needing that time and needing that support does not mean that we are not capable. We are capable of feeling and delivering even more support and intelligent contributions at granular levels of home, work, and society if society stops force-fitting us into certain boxes, spaces, roles and allows us to fill in our preferred spaces. We need encouragement and partnership to do these things. And you must not confuse these expectations and sentiments as a desire for control and censorship. We are raising society. We are raising the people you work with. We are also part of the people you need. The future of the country is in our hands too. We are your mothers, your sisters, your daughters, your wives, your girlfriends, your friends, your colleagues. And our influence in all the spaces around you is unavoidable. We bring the good as well as the bad. And how you tap into our presence and abilities is how the society around you will develop. We are a broken society. And the work we need to do to heal and find our way back is a lot but we cannot succeed if the effort to heal Ghana, embrace Ghana up, is done with half of the population being left behind and left out of most of the decision-making spaces. You can't move forward if you are a Women are here, we're strong, we're capable, and what you do with this knowledge is up to you. But Ghana's rise and success depends on what you do decide to do. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much, Ms. Kodaka Adakumaru. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghana is broken. And the work we need to do is a lot. And we cannot do that just using half of the population. Everyone is involved. By so, I would like to make a special request for all of us to sing the National Youth Anthem. And so if you are here, please be on your feet as we, speak, as we sing the National Youth Anthem. Arise Ghana Youth for your country. Alright, let's do this together.
for disaster. Professionally, Kusi is a development planner and a GIS analyst with vast experience in strategic planning, monitoring, and evaluation, and an evolving interest in the built environment. The interaction between land use and human activities and the resultant environment it creates is a crucial is crucial for human progress. Ladies and gentlemen, please with a round of applause, but even as you have yourself, please help me welcome Mr. Kusi Adakwa. October 1987, I was enrolled here as a medical student. I am very familiar with this book, and that's why I came here. And when we came to the school, the school of me had only about 80 students, 60 students in the class. I was speaking to the uh, school administrator at that time, and he said, no, there are 13,000. And I said, but where is the infrastructure to upgrade the thousand? This is an absolute joke. Okay, so you don't care about quality. The same infrastructure that held 180 is essentially the same infrastructure that is holding 13,000. The whole school should close down. It's a disgrace. But this is the tip of the rice. Professor Kuchi, you saw that. Was my best friend from secondary school, and I just like this. We're in the same class, so even outside the age, science. And because of him, I got all like line Maxwell. Because when he finished law and he was in his lab, he came to stay with me at the boom. So he was a big boy in the class. So the strengths, you know, they all came to me. Discussion, so I got to the most. I invited some of them today by the name of the Kansas. They are Kansas, they are And we know them. And our revolution is the same, you know. Just before the Moncada attack in Cuba in 1953, 26 July, Castro said something. Just before he said, in a few hours, you will be victorious or defeated. But regardless of the outcome, this movement will triumph. We are sitting here because of a reason. And the reason we are sitting here, we will triumph. I know that. I have never had any in the hospital. And this is not going to be exception. It's even more than that. The whole providence is calling for a change. And it's going to happen. Sometimes not the way you think, but it's going to happen. And now, we think she will come to school. Martin Luther. And then after that, Maxwell came. And Maxwell school, constitutionalism, you have to be careful, you have to do this, you have to do that. But the fundamental thing in the institution, about all else, is that we the people, in a way, that the prayer, the last thing in the prayer is that we the people have enacted and adopted this constitution for ourselves. Okay, we are the owner of the constitution. And if you own a house, the house doesn't tell you how to treat it. You treat the house, it's your property. We own the constitution. And we will do to the constitution what we want to do to the constitution. Nobody knows the constitution. Not the government, not any party, not Nana Kufado, not John Mahama, not Jerry Rollins. We own, we adopt it. And in that of whatever it says, this is for ourselves. So if you say we don't want it, it's our property. And we have the right to say we don't want it. That and that's where um, where's he? Where's he? he went to eat a little bit, talking about immobilized power, immobilized power. We say that in physics. We call it potential energy and kinetic energy. All of us, 
and they can place your wallet on a negative field. And that proof where you are sitting, you are not in it. And that energy is only potential because it's not emotion. If you understand the physics, I forgot your memory, but I remember this. As long as you are sitting, your energy is zero. As long as you are sitting, your energy is zero. You have whatever power you need to do. As long as you are sitting, that power is zero. You need to move. With the block kinetic energy. That's what you call mobilized power. Right. And now you have left mobilized power to the worst society. The absolute worst society. You've got to get more back. And that's what I'm talking to you about. Alright, so I've gone through what a little bit of what I was saying. Uh, Rosa Oche, uh, we discuss this all the time. We don't agree. On certain issues because uh, of our personalities, let me put it that way. He is yeah, different from me. I mean, when we were in school, it's so funny that we were so different, but yet very, very close. Uh, and I know his views about literally everything. He knows what I'm going to say to you today, and I knew what he said to you for me. Because that of this is all the time. A very good advice of legal in this form of this for me and the funny member of the African Reform Movement. Because there is none that are doing this for the help of support. It has to be so many things that are very familiar. Now, what they are going to do is to create a new path with your help. I was going to talk about two issues. You see, Ghana has got two major problems. Two major structural problems. And the first one is the partisan framework. The first one is the political organization, how politics is organized. Normally, no parties take or parties go into government. No, parties win elections and they give or they gain power to rule. But in Ghana, something abnormal happened. That a government gave belief to a party. Very abnormal. Usually, parties give belief to government. You stay outside and you compare. But in Ghana in 1992, something very abnormal happened. That a government gave birth to a party. So, let me put it in that way. Jerry Rollins could not form a party if he was a head of state. So it's an abnormality. And that has got consequences for the state in which we are. Because in the state, it's seen as a guarantor of a political party. Then that becomes the culture. So people go into government to use government to perpetrate their state in government. Jerry Rollins couldn't have formed a party outside. Because I know how hard it is to do that. And what I cannot easily do, there is no endurance to do it was my position. Just an arbitrary. So for the first time, we have a government giving them a party. That was the first moment. And then the other group, what we call them, NDP. So I call NDC the state party. And NDP, I call them the Uterine Party. It's a party of two classes, the Asuna clan and the Oyogolet clan, or no agreement on that. And they had the means to sustain that tradition. For those of you who don't know, when Bafa Koto formed the National Liberation Movement in 1954, 
and they tried to compare them with these elections, they had only 39 candidates. Okay? 39 candidates. And they stood in only two regions, Ashanti and East Bay. It has never been a national party. For those of you who don't know, it's a new joint part. A party for the Asuna Clan of Achim and the Yukulek Clan of Asanti. It's as simple as that. But that is fine. The women's, the guns, the weather are also from the party. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why we got this globally as a chairman alluded to. The government giving birth to the party. And two powerful individuals giving birth to the party. It's not easy to break. And nobody should be seeing for yourself that it is easy to break. The only way they can be broken is what we call autolysis. They break themselves. We can be shouted about autolysis. They break themselves. And that's what the local food has successfully done. I was talking to one of the guys who wants to contest for their flag a few days ago. So I'm yeah, very sorry to be here because of the wrong alcohol with the campaign. I said, forget about coming to the money to me because you will be your view. Your party brand is damaged. And if you bring Baobia or Alejandro Mantin, you go to Dubai 30%. You will punish. They got all back to their bases. The goodwill they had from people. This is a party that started with only 39 out of around four candidates in a different six. When they came back in 70, 79, with those, after the first round, I think got 30% of the votes. After the second round, the man got 62, the highest single vote in independent Ghana. And with those, no those, but only 10 percent And that tells you the limit of the party's popularity. Now, they reinvented themselves and came in 1952. And they were being buried by the government. So they stumbled again. And they went back to the Hosos, brand new rules, around 20 and 30 percent. That's what they were in. The NDP seen was looked like Kufu. In 1996, he was able to raise a his bank and he got almost 40% of the votes. Now, once you get 40% of popular votes, then you know that you got a good chance of winning, especially when it was brought in for tea. Everybody was time. And I can lose two years ago around saying, oh, I'll consult 24 7. It was like, oh, so it's going to be direct continuation of this. So I can lose the good numbers. And before managed to win. Now, this is the path we have traveled to where we are today. And that's why the globally appears to be unbreakable. But you see, there is no globally without citizens. NDP did not win. Ghanaians would just be impeached. Yes. Ghanaians would just be impeached. If Ghanaians don't vote for MP, real or not real, there will not be that. And it did not win before. Ghanaians would just be impeached. So, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, everything comes down to Ghanaians. What I'm standing here telling you is not to beg you to go to me at any point in time. I'm going to tell you why I'm here. What is to be So, the next thing the preamble to the Constitution or the soul of the Constitution that is attacking power in the Constitution. See, I'll try to paraphrase it. To keep everything. It says that in the name of Almighty God, we, the people of God, uh, in exercise of our natural and inalienable rights, 
to establish a framework of government which shall secure for ourselves and posterity the blessings of liberty, equality of opportunity, and prosperity. This is the fundamental aspiration of the Constitution that there must be a certain framework of government that will secure, not just for ourselves, but for posterity, these three fundamental things. Now, you have to ask yourself this. Which of these three things has been achieved or attained? Now, so, the mechanism which is supposed to deliver has failed. The framework of government which is supposed to give us these three things, that framework has failed. All the speakers have gone around into one way or the other. Why? Why the framework has failed? Now, if something has failed, like, uh, what's the name? The young girl. Golden State, Ghana is a failed state. If the framework has failed, then that framework must be changed. And that framework is the 1992 situation. When we were in the American school, when we school, when this question was put to vote, and I was against it. Every student in my class knew this. I told them that this will lead to constitutional dictatorship because it was just recruiting brothers and the guys of constitutional group. So they were comfortable. And like once very senior NEC elder told me, they had to tease the bull from the China shop. And that was the whole philosophy behind the Constitution. And of course, he slipped up to the expectation that I had in 1992. So as a matter of fact, I didn't vote in that referendum. And when Maxwell said 92 percent, when they turned out, it was 35 percent. All right, and like they say, sometimes, what, what they say, what services review may be suggested. Uh, what they have, like I said, size like the kings, what they reveal may be suggestive, but what they conceal may be vital. You know, you reach 92%, but 92% of what? Of a kind of 35%. So even there, it's fake. But then people were tired, so they were there, form of change, and they pass it for their son. Now, we've come to a point where that constitution has demonstrated faith that nobody can come to it. You cannot have a constitution which says that you are going to put prosperity for posterity and within 14 years we have accumulated half a trillion cities of debt. Now our debt is more than our GDP ratio is more than 100%. That is, if everything Ghana is so including the chairs you are sitting on, everything, if they take my phone and they add the other we still cannot pay our debt. So we have not only deprived ourselves and generations to come, the prosperity that was envisaged at the time of the constitution, we are trying to build poverty. And it's not over yet. The first December last year, our debt was half a trillion. It's not over yet. Because the budget handed down by what was like I said? He came with a deficit of 47 billion cities. Now, people don't understand. But it's a deficit that drives the debt. Because this deficit will have to be financed. Either through more borrowing or through pretty more money. With the bank of better calls, overdraft. Alright, now we know the cause of you don't need to do any economics to know that if you pump so much money in the system and pay more money, V will go up and the price will drop. Right? So tightening your belts. But that's what's going to happen. They are going to pay more. Or they're going to borrow more. Or do both. 
But the fund is seven billion. It's going to now be six to five billion. But they won't get their revenue projections. And they will spend more than what they've stolen and they'll spend. That is the way we do this. So, the party system has failed. Because we had a system where one party came to, was gifted by the state. And the other one was given to the land. With a means to do so. Nobody can penetrate. The only way we can penetrate is that they will collapse themselves. Like I said before, MPP has shown how to destroy itself. And this is so like I believe it today, and I know the reason why they can't Because it's a state part. We are talking about something different. We know why the two parties have become what they have become. We know why the country has become what it has become. If you want a third party, I can assure you, if that third party comes to power, it's going to do the same thing. Don't lie to yourself because there are people who are funding these two parties. And if somebody decides not to take his money to treasure bills, but decides to give it to a party, then obviously, if the wise investor, he believes that he will get more from this party than from the treasury bills. And the only way a dead party can overthrow the name is to have the same kind of sponsorship. And because that's what they're thinking. That, oh, we don't want that. We don't need it. Man. So, it's out. And people are quite keen to eat today and tomorrow we'll say the same thing. We have more Esau's than Jacob's in this world and in particular in India. We don't mind here and today. Tomorrow we'll figure out what's happened. In the end, they all cry like Esau and cry my own mind like Esau. We've got to change the image. Now, I'm talking about franchise policy. Now, what is franchise policy? Let me start from as far as possible and we come home. How many of you know that the early church was under from a prison? How many of you know that? The chief apostle Paul founded the early church from prison. Read his episode. I write this and I'm in prison because he adopted the franchise system. Timothy, Titus, Philemon, and all those people. They build the local churches independent of Paul himself. They follow his instructions how to organize it, how to appoint deacons, how to appoint bishops, but they run the church as their own in the sense that they don't take the instructions to them. And that's why he was able to replicate himself quickly around the whole of Asia by his such a short space of time. So, how does that relate to what I'm saying? Paul had a vision to go. He claims to have been struck by lightning on his way to the Damascus and had his revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, who directed him to do A, B, C. So, we had a vision. He was the man with the vision and the plan of how to save the Gentiles. And it's not only Paul. Time and again, God gave somebody to a people, to a nation, to a continent, with a clear vision of what has to be done. Sometimes, sometimes those people are accepted. Sometimes they are actually killed. They are not accepted. And if you believe that you have that kind of a body, you've got to step your foot for it. And then kill you. Or die. You know so? Yeah. All that. So some of us will do that. But Paul set up a structure, very efficient structure, that nobody found in Paul. The man was half the time in prison. After today, he is the most successful possible. He formed a structure that, you know, when I was here today, I was defending that without knowing that it was actually a franchise system. So, how does that? So then when that one comes out, 
he said that he wants to do A, B, C, D. So he claims the British. He claims he's really going to save them. So how does the pain get to come up with He claims to be a fighter. So, so now he needs franchises to send the community to send the vision to the community. Meanwhile, he's sitting in cell or in jail or some awkward place. He doesn't have the infrastructure. But he comes to the idea that this thing is in without saying that. Oh, I want to stand. I like you. Go there. <laughs> okay. I want to stand for that. But I'm an independent person. I don't have any serious idea of what I really want to do with my kind. I've listened to you and I believe that from what you are telling me, I can follow your plan and be an effective local member. I said, okay. But you are not saying no, I don't have a political party. I'm quite happy for using a brand like they have Kentucky in Osu, Kentucky in La, whatever. Now, these are all independent businesses based on the Kentucky brand. Kentucky doesn't own them. So, you know what to stand for? MP in Alad, or near uh, what to stand for? Which I will change that you look at it anyway. I don't have to look at it. Because that's not really anything. Alright, so, he wants to stand there and he says that, a very good friend, very, very, this man, very, very good. Also from the Alad, very, very good. Not just a friend, very, very good. But there yeah, is okay, but I'm not in this I'm not in this What you're telling me is that you won't you believe what I'm saying. You want to stand in your community, go to be a second in your community, so that my national appeal will rub off you and your local appeal will rub off me. So we create a housing association. Who go ahead and buy your business. But those of you who grew up in the in Accra, will lose you. When we were growing up, there were only four layers of fibers. The thing is, they didn't have to build infrastructure in the community to sell their bread. Others went in there, collected the bread, and sold it for the day. So, it's a franchise arrangement. A franchise arrangement. So, and what I'm trying to hint at is that unless we break the political system that people find to come to power and steal from you, you're not going to be free. We have to have a place there where the national body is a very tiny thing. Like the data in those. You only have to it, but it's very much to the community anyway. Or Apostle Paul, always in jail, by his message, go to the community anyway. Or they are going to help. They didn't sign on the Supreme Court, by his message, go to the community anyway. And those who take the message to the community is their franchise. Those of you doing business, you have to understand what I'm doing. And I didn't learn it, I lived it. So it comes to be natural. When we do that, it doesn't only really bring the large bureaucracy that has to be fed in the state when that money comes to power. It gives the parliamentarians also the right to be independent. Because if I tell you that if you vote for me, we have this arrangement that my first time there, there will be no deficit. I'm bound by that. Like Logan says, a social country. I'm bound by that. So if you go into parliament and I read the first by you, and it's 50 billion deficit, you have all the moral rights to reject it. Because you have the power to do so. And I'm part of it. The agreement you made, I said I will not do this. And I've done that. I have broken the promise. So, because let me tell you something, without an independent parliament, you are not going anywhere to see. Why a parliament that can tell them, sorry, it's not you. Because somebody told you what you do. What was it? What is it? The vice president power. 
Only the truth. What is the water? What is the water? I mean, in the proper place, this man probably be in jail. I was in prison. But I think you're stupid. Now, 22, 24. Uh, now, if I tell you that I'm going to use 10% of your GDP for health. I don't promise you this. I promise you this. What I've promised you is that I'm going to use 10 percent of your GDP for health. Now, what that 10 percent will constitute is another discussion, and then that's where the health minister is in that you the country that if for the financial rider, necessarily know it is okay. Because we never see it in the United States. And I know that. But we don't think in those things. We don't think in structure things. All the time. When it's time for relationships, and they get saved to your promises. Give you guys the whole percentage of the GDP in this place. He has no idea. By the time you put all together, the promises. We are revenue and then the visit comes. But when you have decided that yes. you go to have a system where you give 10% help, this is not give you to education. You know that you know the limits. UNESCO says that the minimum for help for education should be six percent. The first time in the history of Ghana that we cross that threshold was 1976. In that we never before. That's not the best. It was very nice. It was very nice. If you are not keep out, this will be different for all of them for you. But it was the first time in the history of Ghana. We have this book, how much they give it to you? They don't know. They have them because they don't think in those things. I only say because they are not signed, but they are signed this. But they just don't think. So, you don't make promises. You just say that, okay, you have 100 cities. I will use 10 of 100 cities for health. I will use 6 of 100 cities for education. I use 4 of 100 cities for defense and security. I, so, at the end of the day, that's what it is. When you get to 100, you stop. So, we have a bigger issue. Economic management because we don't be in the right way. So, when people were interviewing me, I said, Also, oh, what are you doing for them? What do you do for them? Don't ask me that question. You put them for people who are stealing from you, who are borrowing from you, and who are bastardizing you. And don't expect me to stand here today and tell you that the solution is this. First and foremost, get rid of them. See the need to get rid of and I can tell you that this is what I'm going to do. My first bad day, no deficit. But that's the way it is. You know what I'm This is the here. When he was a Christian, he was in the class. But when he came from home, he was in our school, he was in our school. He would pass the days and he gave me half of his money. He gave me half. And then when he did that eight, he would come to me.
Now, that's in our submit yet down from the position. Actually, because you don't need to change the position to have a proper that system we can have it today. If all of you accept that you're going to stand in the community there, because that's the guy. And you're going to be independent. Now you will use my agenda for it. So you don't need a change of position for you to do that. So that's why I separate that position and change and we felt proud. I really want to bear with the constitution and change. I think uh, society, society is made up of man and the rules man makes and himself. So if the rules are bad, you have a society. There's nothing else about society apart from human beings and the rules they make. So I want to be the guy that by the point of the you have a bad society in the rules I don't believe Ghanaians are bad per se because wherever we go outside Ghana, we do exactly well. So intrinsically, I don't believe we are that bad. What is wrong is the rules that we have made. I mean, how did a country that traces its ancestry to five centuries ago, it didn't fight the past generation? Because some people stand down and they even believe that somebody can take my guns from me. That we want to very sick in your head to think that way. That because of atheism, I'm no longer a guy. But you see, if I remain in Ghana, if you see that the remains a shanty, you don't think it's better than from here. Because we are an ethnic country. We are not a migration country that was put up in the US. We've got to get a concept of that. Now, the name is now in our field. Her father's name was A. I need she's important. Message the head, they know where it comes from. Yeah, she's from the All right. Now I'm going to have British passport, American passport, Australian passport, Japanese passport, Chinese passport. You come to Africa and say I'm going now, and they will take you to the house in that event. So for anybody, to even think of country with that system means that something is wrong with the brain. And I call it as I mean, if if Master KKD is for you, and it's a that's and he has British passport or whatever, would that stop him from being something? So who is more powerful? That's something of the minister. Of course. So now you are telling me that. He cannot be with that minister by like Kevin Sandin, so there's something wrong with him. We need a proper look at that. I was telling you, you need a right time now. The structure, the structure, the whole state is strong and outdated. When the MC was counting my college directly. He said a few things. Oh, I move from this to this and to that. I move from this uh, homogeneous black country to mixed race to white country. I move from first world to second world to third I move from a unity state to semi-federal to federal. I've seen it all. And I'm telling you that we are not in the days of war, we're in the days of service provision. And the best. And the most effective way of providing service is to be a just fighter. And I'm going to come in. But I know. When we finished my dance school, it took me, no me, it took all of us five months to reach our first salary. But everything is processed at one place for one month. I don't know what it is. When I live here in South Africa, the first place I wake in South Africa was a former black township. 
kama homeland na kwani kuja kikopede huduma banga is in transfer ili nde ili nde ntakwani i was paid after one month because i was in the world no one could have said that the commission had made of huduma banga and everything was processed yo and I moved to Australia. The first place I went was in Perth, General Health Campus. And I was paid after two weeks because they didn't move away from the, uh, from, from the state. is hospital and hospital board. So my salary was processed in the hospital. So I know what efficiency is. And then we go through everything. We are struggling about tax revenue. Of course, we don't know what you are doing. We do. We have no idea what you are doing. Even the infrastructure to collect taxes, we don't understand. We say that our tax system is not good. Why should it be high? Why should it be high? When all tax is collected at one point. In Australia, our tax GDP is 24%. 16% is collected at the federal level. And 8% is collected at the state level. That's efficient. Can I never get there in the system? It's impossible. Go structure and find it. That's why they have Paralympics and Olympics. The visible cannot run, you know it. It's as simple as that. So you cannot have a disabled transportation system and then you perform like an able transportation system. You have to see somewhere. So when we talk about federalism, we're not talking about Ashanti nationalism. I know that way it stays. That's why education is important. We're not going to go anywhere without fighting studies. We look at poverty. Everything is on the high speed. Because if they don't go, they, they call it husbandry, matrimony, devolution. Devolution. If they don't go there, it's called an obligation. So, for the reason that's in the big way, We live in a country where one man stood up and said, I'm going to increase with that administration by 60%. From 10 to 16, I don't know that it needed a But when you increase 10 to 16, you are increasing the number of rupees by 60%. The financial shock to the fiscal. The world, have you ever seen somebody doing that? And then when COVID came, oh, oh so there are no rich hospitals, oh, there are no rich of course, don't be. Why do you get a new building? And what is the best? Over 300 years ago, when Enochi was building Sanai, he decided to become uh, a prince pastor. That's why he started with five prince pastors. To become a principal state, you need to be able to provide 10,000 men for war and a certain amount of gold dust for the war machine. You just don't get up and respect. The state must go to defend itself, must go to defend itself. You do not go to northern Ghana, where you have only 80% of the population there, and create five regions because Tara was lost one thing. Who's going to go for the glories? And these are the three poorest women in the country. So you proliferate poverty by doing that. If you went to a one, you would be cold. How can it? How can the population of what that is? The upper west. Our internet. In the same economic states, compete with a greater crowd of almost 60. Some of 
it. We're going to talk about it. And the way we're going to break it is this. And, and that's why I have the word economic feminism. You won't read it. Alright, let's get this. We have economic feminism. Where the state will be in the percent of the population. In each other, nobody can change. In the percent of the population. It needs to have a certain amount of labor force to be economically viable. Get from there. I know that's the biggest thing. They are just one of the biggest things in the population. So, they are just one of the biggest So, you have that. And within each state, you're going to have five districts of the poor populations. And within each district, you're going to have five constituencies. What you are trying to do is to build a state power. Because each state will have a state Peace in the state power. That they can hold it to a state But what I'm saying is, we have to move away from someone just getting up after a bad night's prayer, decide they're going to build more regions. And he can. It's going to create more discrimination. Yeah. If anybody from Osu is here, what they say to the people to give them news about these things from the crowd, I say no. It's true. It's not said. Because a crowd has three uh, British a crowd and Danish a crowd. It's true. That's why I'm proud of Osu. Osu is Danish a crowd. Jetstar, Sinti, and what is that one? Akami. They form the Shankara. And Abola, basically, they form that Shankara. You cannot separate those from a crack. It's actually one. And we know that. And we do know that. And it's almost one of them. They are not one of them. They are not one of them. Yeah, if you guys are one of them. So, you can see. But they went ahead, we were telling how much money we make, we were so it's not, we don't work in this way, but well, it's as, in fact, it's better than us. I think so. So, we didn't have a plan as what to constitute a district. And not the population, but well, services are for population, not for dogs and cats and whatever. So it's very complicated. Then we come to most places. We gain the state. We leave the government. That's the first thing. Not too much. National government. Or let go to power. What happens at elections is transfer of mandate or transfer of sovereignty from the electors to the elected. It's not said that you have a parliament. That one MP represents 180,000 people, and that MP represents 18,000 people. That is not representation of this. So it has to make sense. What happens at the elections is that you give your money to him to represent you. So you cannot have one person representing 180,000 and a person representing 18,000. That is end to one ratio. You won't even find that among models. Because you know, this play by side, you know, how to do it. But we have it here. And it's against the future because she talks about population quota. That each constituency job by the same number of uh, population. You know what I mean? Go to spring up to say the East. And the way to change that is what I call Shebo Shebo or Chenpe or what that our proportional representation because we are talking of presenting people. So we have a presentation system in Canada where better rights to the person, national case to the person, same rights to the 
that common sense should tell me that there is a population in, should be represented by 30 percent in parliament. Ten percent population should be represented by 10 percent in parliament because democracy was always representing demography. That's what happens in Australia. I'm not going to go into that. So we are in a proportional representation. And that was our problem because every time it wants to increase the number of seats in parliament, we start politics. So we say, shh, 100 MPs. Each region will have its fair share according to its population. Now, if you have a superior argument, you can bring it up. No, no, no. no. I'm fighting for the about the best. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying that each region should have its fair representation in parliament according to the size of its population. When you read my book, first day chapter, you, you see it in there. That's the one. It goes to national. National campaigns must reflect the When you go in the cabinet, you look at everything in the world. Oh, sorry, sorry. This guy, I see my own. It's an enemy. I see, I see, it's an assembly. I see Pell, the baby. She's a gun. <laughs> I think it's a Java. He's from Rome. He's quite representative because he's got a system. We cannot leave. I mean, we, we live in a country where the moment somebody becomes president, and all of a sudden, all the competent people come from his region. That's all. Yeah, it's all about competence. What do you mean? About what competence? They want to swing, guy. Which year did you finish? Which school did you go to? Where went to school? We don't have to come to that. So what are you telling me? There is no group that was not represented in my class. There was no group that was not represented in my class. So nobody can tell me that. My great grandfather had 35 children with nine. I can form the government. From the castles. But is that the way you want to run the country? But we must accept it. I think you did the first good very different. But nobody, but nobody can say, I will say, but I'm not asking for a job. Can you just want to have a government anymore? You don't want? Very nice. That's a problem. That is a very, very, very important thing. I wish the law was just not change. We must go to I'm not looking at or talking about changing the I'm not talking about changing the I'm talking about change and the law. I'm not talking about just government. I'm talking about a new state. And if the new state, they will have it. Talk about my yard. 